morning will be the service of Holy Eucharist from the Book of Alternate Services. And our first hymn is number 426.
a reading, a reading taken from Exodus chapter 3, reading verses 1 to 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight, and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Then you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The appointed psalm for today is Psalm 105, Psalm 105, found on page 845. Let us stand. We will do verses 1 to 6 and 23 to 26. 1 to 6, page 845. We'll do by the by the act first. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. May all his deeds be Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak to all his works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of all seek the Lord and rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done. It's and judges of O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Over to 23 to 26. Israel came into Egypt. And Jacob became a soldier in the land again. The Lord made his people exceedingly faithful. He made his strong their enemies. Whose art he turned so that they hated the people, his people. He sent Moses his servant. And Aaron, whom he has chosen. And to page 848, we'll say the prayer together. 
God of our salvation, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have fulfilled your promise to our ancestors in the faith to redeem the world from slavery and to lead us into the promised land. Grant us living water from the rock and bread from heaven, that we may survive the death of hell and praise you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> the second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 9. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. <clears throat> Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not be claimed to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The gradual hymn is number 782. Thank you. 
<clears throat> the Holy Gospel is written in the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the ninth verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus spake this parable unto certain, which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering, said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and to whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come back, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You all know the story of the parable of the Good Samaritan. How this man on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho got waylaid by highwaymen, uh, got beat up, and he was left in the ditch, half dead. And several people came by. The priest came by, walked on. The Levite came by, and he walked on. And then a Samaritan. This parable, and the Old Testament lesson that was read about Moses and the burning bush, is about people who took a chance. Moses could have said, I've never seen a bush like that before. This is very unusual. Must be something unnatural. I'm not going to touch that. And he could have walked on. Nevertheless, he took a chance and found God speaking to him. The Samaritan took a, pan took a chance. Several people had passed by. And this has been explained because of ritual uncleanness or nationalism or some other reason why the priest and the Levite passed by. But the Samaritan was a different person. Samaritans were not well viewed upon by the rest of the population. They were foreigners. They did things differently. They were viewed as rather low-class low people. And to have a Samaritan come and minister to somebody who was injured was quite unusual. He could have been set upon by the same highwayman. He could have been set upon by other people who would tell him, get away from here, we don't want your uncleanness rubbing off on people of our nationality. It could have happened, but he took a chance. And what a difference he made. 
He could have been ridiculed. He could have been condemned. But he took that chance. In spite of all that, he took the chance. In the 1990s, 80s, there was a president of PepsiCo. Those wonderful people who bring you Fritos and Quaker Oats and uh, all kinds of foodstuffs besides Pepsi-Cola, um, various types of flavored waters, and all of those things that you don't know of unless you read the fine print on the label. This man's name was John Scully. He was marketing manager of PepsiCo and had an eye on the presidency and he wanted to become chief execu executive officer. So he worked towards that end. In the meantime, Steve Jobs of Apple computer fame was in New York working on computers. And he wanted John Scully to come with him. And so he wrote to him, no. He visited him, not interesting. He visited him time and time again, called him, emailed him, faxed him. No, not interested. I am staying here with PepsiCo. So finally, Steve invited John to come to New York and talk. So John said, probably I'll humor him, but I'm not interested. So he went to New York. And on the way up to Steve Jobs' office from where he met John Scully in the elevator, in, at the, in the lobby, on the way up to his office, Steve Jobs gave John what has been known as the elevator quip. And that's a little statement or a challenge that takes the time from the closing of the elevator doors till the opening on the next floor. To, that's the time it takes. And Steve Jobs said, John, do you want to spend the rest of your life selling flavored juice? Or do you want to come with me and change the world? And that changed John Scully's mind. He went with Steve Jobs and eventually replaced him as CEO. But he took a chance. He was on his way to the top in PepsiCo, a multinational corporation. But he decided, instead of fla selling flavored drinks the rest of his life, he would take a chance and perhaps change the world. And you know how Apple has changed and other computer products have changed our world. Look at the offertory sentence that we use in the Eucharist and at other times. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Henry Nolan, a theological writer, said that the real darkness we face is the darkness of the soul and that darkness is despair. A despair when we say, I can't do anything about it, or we call it fate, is not of our making, it's out of our control. But the answer is, you have the light within you. This parish is looking at change. And you're looking at a time when you're going to have to make a choice. And like the Samaritan, like Moses, like John Scully, take a chance. You're going to have to take many chances in the days to come. People are going to say, well, why did you do that? Or why are you proposing that? Or why do you act like this? And you're going to have to say, this is how my light is shining in this community. This is how I let my light shine in this parish. The question must be then, 
is this parish going to spend its time looking at how things used to be, at how things were, grieving for what is no longer, yearning for something gone? I look at some of the prayers that I, 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 I use in the prayer book, and I say, gee, I'd like to change that. Why not? It's act, it, it, it has so many uh, uh, sentences, phrases, that have no meaning or very little meaning today. So I take a chance, and I change it. Anybody noticed any changes this morning? Probably not. They went over smoothly, and I will continue to do that. I will continue to take a chance until the bishop says, Morris, you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> then I'll say, yes, sir, I took a chance. So, what's the worst thing that, that can happen? Can he fire me? No. I mean, retired for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you going to spend time looking at what has been, or are you going to look at how can my light shine in this parish? Paul's letter to the, to the Christians in Rome <clears throat> sets out, and that was read this morning, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. And those are the, way, the, the ways in which Paul said Christians in Rome should act. And this is the way that Jesus, in his, in his sayings to the disciples <coughs> and all of the people who heard him, say, said that we should act. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Have a compassion and show that compassion to the community, to people you meet. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay everyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as depends on you, live peaceably with all. And that is the elevator to quit. Can you do that in the future? Instead of looking back and saying, things are not like they used to be. How are things going to be? Now we can say, I'm going to let my light shine in this community. Amen. Amen. continues on page 189. In response to God's call to us, let us stand and together confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the of was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he was again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last season. Let us pray. For the prayers of the people, we will be using litany number two, found on page 112. <coughs> litany number two, page 112.
Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for church leaders to remain faithful and true to their calling. In our Anglican communion, we pray for Justin, our Archbishop, Fred, our Prime, Percy, our Metropolitan, and David, our Diocesan Bishop. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Most Reverend Hector Zavala Runaz, Presiding Bishop of the Southern Home and Bishop of Chile. In our tri diocesan intercessions, we pray for the congregations of the parish of Smith Sand and the rector, the Reverend Bob Olford, and for the congregations of the parish of King's Cove, who is awaiting a clergy appointment. We give thanks for all who have served the people there, and we pray for a permanent rector. Let us pray for our parish of St. Mary's. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry of Reverend Daphne. We pray that she will have a restful week and a rewarding, fun month at St. Mary's. We thank you, Lord, for many who take our leadership roles, and we pray that others will come forward as we move into the fall. We look forward to the return of our young people. We pray for the selection committee for our new, re for our new rector, that you will grant them wisdom and guidance from your Holy Spirit as they work through the process to find a clergy to meet the needs and grow this parish. <coughs> we pray for the spirit of generosity amongst our members so that we may meet our financial commitments and continue to reach out to those in less fortunate. O oh Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our nation, remembering Stephen Ackerman, our Prime Minister, and the premiers of the provinces. And we remember our own political situation at this time, and we pro pray that things will work out for the good of all. Let us pray for the leaders of all nations, that they will open their hearts to see the love you have for them. We pray for a change of heart and a respect for all human life, especially for the people of Iraq, Syria, the Ukraine, Gaza, Gaza, and all troubled areas of the world. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Lord, hear our prayer. Open our eyes to see the many injustices around us. Help us to hear the cries of the marginal in our society, the abused, the depressed, the lonely, and the poor, and those who are incarcerated. Break down the barriers of race, color, and creed. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you have created a beautiful place in which to live, and we are called to be as stewards. Help us to appreciate our space and take on our responsibilities to care for it. Help us to live in unity with all you have created. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we acknowledge and give thanks for all the work in the field of research to find <coughs> the focus being on ALS and Ebola in recent days. We give thanks for all who devise and improve diagnostic equipment, for doctors and nurses, and all who devote their time in caring for others. Strengthen, Lord, all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those on our sick list. We pray for a healing according to your gracious <clears throat> will. For Harold, Helen, Tyler, Riley, Natalie, Daryl, Reverend Kay, Emma, Reverend Sheila, Reverend John, Blair, Myrtle, Inis, Elizabeth, Huey, Kim, George, Susie, Shirley, Caroline, Eric, Michael, Pauline, Alice. We pray for victims of natural disasters. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest for all who are dying, and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, hear our prayer.
Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorrow, and we hope you repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you stand please as we exchange the reading of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I'm and also with you. With you.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All eyes be heaven and the earth is thine. All things are thine. Thee, and all thine are the beginning. Amen. We use Eucharistic prayer number five on page 204. and praise Almighty God for the gift of a world full of wonder and for our life which comes from you. By your power you sustain the universe. Glory, Glory to you forever and ever. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves but we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus your Son you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we say, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Give thanks and praise, Lord, because in sending Jesus, your Son, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaking, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you forever and ever. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus had supper with his friends, took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Glory, Glory to you forever and ever. Gracious God, with this bread and this wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread and share in the life of the family of your children. Glory Glory to you forever and ever. Father, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory to you forever and ever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our holy bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we do not have to take the nation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Faith is 
see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in Him. This is the food of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Service continues on page 214. Let us pray. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. 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 Closing hymn is number 555.
love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The worship is over. The